All right, what was your question about Dory magic? Um, I just wanted to do like some symbols or like a ritual that could just kind of bless the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to deal with my front door. If there was anything I could do for like going out into the world. See, I wanted to do both doorways. Usually Dory, Dory magic, especially with Papa Legba, um, has more to do with a relationship between realms than actually a relationship between uh, the inside of one's home and the outside of one's home, or like the world in this uh, universe, or in this plane of existence. Usually doorway magic has to do with an interaction between realms in general. Um, now, there are, there are ways you can bless anybody who's walking in or out of your house or protect the doorway that you're dealing with, but it's not necessarily doorway magic as I dealt with it before. Um, so, but, I mean, I can, I can recommend some things that you can do in order to bless somebody coming in or out, um, or, uh, kind of give you a boost of energy if you're leaving or coming, uh, which, what sounds interesting to you as far as what you want to do with your doorway? Um, well, kind of like, you know, like how people feng shui their bedrooms. Like, I just kind of want to, um heighten the energy in the bedroom, and then just kind of heighten yourself as you walk out the front door. Okay. Uh, um, what's, what symbols are you most comfortable with? Like, what system are you most comfortable with? Like, any system? Or, it really helps if you identify more with the certain symbols that I can, that you want to use for the doorway. Like, if, whatever you consider that blesses somebody or something more, and other symbols and symbols you have an attachment up to uh, symbols that you have an understanding of uh, those will help you a lot more than any other symbols that you don't have an understanding of does that make sense yeah like I'm not previously attached to any symbolism so to any symbols or anything okay so like I would I would operate with Papa Legba personally because he's he's the gate he's the basically the doorman the gatekeeper uh, between here and other realms but he also deals with uh, opportunity and if you pass through a doorway be it your bedroom door or your front door um, he can give you a blessing that basically will have better luck in whatever you're trying to do or you're, he'll give you better um, opportunity uh, just in the world at large and uh, that's why he's a very a very foundational spirit that I like to deal with Aloha uh, because he there's nobody between Papa Legba and us because he basically controls the door between us and other spiritual beings. So he's he's immediately accessible to us. Uh, so I'd highly recommend using like Papa Legba's Vive. And what kind of alterations are you willing to make to your door? Um. Well, I could write on it. Would you would you be willing to like thinly paint on it or like or like use ink and kind of uh, it's kind of hard to write on a door frame because it has paint. Uh, but if you if you're willing to paint it in like thin lines, uh, that'd probably be best for your situation. Yeah. Okay. So um. But I I wouldn't recommend. Painting his Vive would be very good if you put it on either side of the door frame, but you have to introduce, introduce yourself to Papa Leg, but you have to get to know him a little bit, and then he's more likely to actually deal with you uh, just in general. Like, he, if you don't get to know him, he's not going to like be negative towards you. It's just that it's better to get to know Papa Leg, but, uh by creating a Vive, or by reading more on Papa Legba, or by trying to... Trying to focus on his spirit by meditating on his V, trying to picture it in your mind while you're meditating. But you have to kind of get to know Papa Legba a little bit through any you know smaller smaller rituals before before you can use them in the door frames, basically. Before you can create these portals that'll bless you or uh, bless somebody coming in or out. Uh, so, are you willing to do something like that? Oh yeah, I'm more than willing to do something like that. Okay. Um, then I can give you Papa Legba's Vive that I use. There's many designs for his Vive that are slightly different, but um, the one that I use is the very first one, well, the one that I recommend anyway, is the very first one I ever drew for him. And 
if you want to make that outline, I can show you right now, or I can send you a picture of it. But I can do both if you want. But uh, it'd be better if you make your own outline of it as well, and not just use the picture. But um, if you're gonna meditate on it and actually form a connection on top of Legba, basically place the vive in front of you on this little piece of paper, about yay big, um, and you're sitting down, cross-legged. And you, you focus on the image for about for a minute or two, then you close your eyes and you basically try to picture it while your eyes are closed. And I've told you basic meditation techniques before. I can I can explain them again if you want. But uh, you sit there and you try to picture it in your mind's eye for five to ten minutes. It depends on how long you can meditate. Uh, twenty minutes is ideal, but it's it's hard to uh, try to picture an image for twenty minutes. And a lot of the time when you try to picture something, visualize something for the first time, uh, and you're not used to visualization, it only comes in flashes. So it's better to actually do it in a short amount of time if you're not used to visualization. Uh, but I, I'll give you the I'll give you the Vive that I use. And I'll, I'll take a picture of it, I'll send it to you. But also I'll hold it up so you can see it. But... And the funny thing about this Vive is that when I first drew it and I was tearing it out of the book, it ripped exactly along the cane. Like basically where Papa Legba like meets this world through where he's stepping into his cane, he, it ripped exactly on the cane and I glued and I taped it back together and I was like, man, that was a perfect fucking rip. It's like there's a portal in this Vive itself. But um, yeah, let me, uh, let me send that to you. I'll send it on uh, Facebook Messenger. And you know, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to use a ruler, it doesn't have to be completely symmetrical, like, down to the letter, but it has to be this basic design. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be, but uh, I would highly recommend this this design for Papa Legba's Eve. Because there's a few different kinds. Did you get it? Oh, you got it? Okay, good. And then um, I'll go ahead and uh, photograph the book about Dora and Magic and send it to you. But there's a few blinders in the book that I noticed where it was like you had to figure out some of this stuff because there's a few things that are kind of the opposite of what you should do. And that's that's similar to a lot of other spiritual books. Like, you have to be... Probably was a lot like that. Yeah. very kind of vague and you could interpret it in so many yeah, ways. Yeah, and, and see, th that's one thing, but when I'm talking about blinders, it's like they, there are certain little things that they actually tell you the opposite of what you should do, uh, and that's basically a, uh, a safeguard against like ignorant people using the information. So, yeah, I figured that out reading Crowley. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine, I haven't read a whole lot of Crowley, but I imagine he did that too. Let yeah, Crowley's an interesting read. It definitely works your mind, <laughs> trying to read his information. Oh, yeah. And I'm sending this uh, this book information real quick. Uh, there you go. And this one's actually pretty cheap. This one is actually more of a pamphlet than a book, but he is more on the left-hand path, just to warn you. And he deals with with the uh, spirits that would be more considered to be the spirits that Bokor would use, whereas um, kind of right-hand path Vodau practitioners, uh, Mambos and Haugans, uh, the priests that practice uh, more of the right-hand path, not about cursing or negative energy, um, wouldn't use some of this information. But there's a lot of useful information in it. Uh, so I'd highly recommend you getting it. And um, there are some charms, some symbols that you can glue onto your door frame to actually do similar things to the Vive, but the Vive is the best. Um, but it takes you basically buying a bag of, of uh, charms on like something somewhere like Amazon because there's no way you're going to find a lot of these charms uh, like just in a store or whatever. But uh, I'll give you an example. It has to be, and these are these are things I've associated with Legba over time. 
for instance, like a little uh, key charm. Yeah. Because a, he's a he's connected to doorways. Yeah. Um, and I have a bunch of charms. They just come like in a bulk bag. Uh, hold on, let me see. If I, can. I actually associate skulls with leg belt all the time because uh, people who die basically have to go to other realms, and death is kind of the transition that we all are, uh, participate in, and well, we have to participate in, but also have to go through in order to reach other realms, because most of the time people aren't having interactions between realms, so death is that transition, that transitionary force. So skulls are often attributed to uh, many boat out spirits uh, for that reason, because it's the transition. Uh, and there's, and for most boat out spirits, crosses, ornate crosses, are uh, are part of a lot of symbolism, and that's kind of the Masonic and Catholic influence on Vodau. But uh, and Vodau has many influences. It's kind of like a grab bag spiritual ideology. Uh, let's see. If I was going to go into it. I'd say that Vodau has Taino Indian, which is. Uh, native to Haiti before the Spanish worked him to death. Uh, that's where we get the beeves from because they drew beeves in the sand. Uh, also, there's the the African uh, spiritual beliefs from, I think, Dahomey, some Igbo, uh, West Africa and South Africa, but not North Africa or Central, uh, influence in in Vodau. Then there's the, the, of course, the Catholic influence where they tried to filter their beliefs through Catholicism so they could still worship the spirits without converting completely. They just used Catholic saints to symbolize them. Uh, then you have the different pagan beliefs, but there's a whole bunch of different beliefs in Vodau, and there's a whole bunch of different symbols, but all these different symbols combined always gives you a nature for each spirit. Um, you could even use something like a spiral for Papa Legba. Uh, to represent time and our inevitability of passing into the realm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, that's some ideas as far as the charms you can put in the doors, as far as you want to glue. But, um, yeah. A lot of the same influence, not influences, uh, symbols that Papa Legba uses are used by Baron Samedi. And Baron Samedi is the protector of the graveyard. Uh, it's said in Vodau, if Baron Samedi won't dig, dig your grave, you won't die. Uh, he protects people in the boneyard, and he basically helps people across uh, the, Vo the Vodau spiritual river between us and the other realms. Uh, but yeah, that's just some, inform some information off the top of my head that you might be able to use. What's your other questions? Like, I just wanted to know what I could do for my doorways. Like, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can... You have to form a connection with Legba first. Uh, but secondly, the cool thing about Vodau and dealing with Papa Legba is that there's not a whole lot of rules. There's no, like, one book that Vodau follows. Like, you have to believe everything in this book. Otherwise, you, you're not a Vodau song. It's basically... You do what works for you. And... Um, you know, Ugo Ferai can give you a lot of strength, but Papa Legba will give you the luck and the blessing that you, I think, that you're wanting. Um, now, as far as offering to the Veeves that are on your doorframe, uh, when you are when you create Veeves, that's a physical representation of Papa Legba. That's, that's the, the, the literal doorway between you and his presence. So... To these beeves, you have to regularly offer um, some form of offering, and I'll tell you some of Legba's offerings. Um, Pop paint lotion is a particular kind of perfume. Um, that's what dries away negativity and is an offering to Vodau spirits. Um, you can offer them just regular white rice, uh, or you can offer them rum. Uh, those are just some of the regular offerings. But, um, and white candles as well. But you have to, in order to fuel these beeves, they're not just going to last forever. In order to fuel these beeves so that they can continue working for you once you form a connection with Papa Legba and you paint them in, um, you have to make offerings to them. And in Vodau, the offerings aren't as specific, uh, but 
Papa Legba, he likes rice, he likes rum, and he likes uh, good smelling perfumes, Pref preferably uh, Pompeii lotion, but it's kind of hard to get a hold of sometimes. You have to order on Amazon or something like that. What do I do with an offering? Uh, if you're going to use cologne, you uh, basically uh, sh shake drops after you make the hole in the top or if it's like already open and it's just a round circle where like a lot can pour out you hold your thumb on it and then you shake it but you want just a little bit of spray uh, to get on the veeves and um, with the rice you might want to put it in a small metal cup and put it at the bottom of each side of the door frame where there's a veeve should be on each side of the door frame ideally on the the top of it too but that's not absolutely necessary um, and you never want an offering to stay there for more than a day. Uh, and then after that day, you want to remove it. And if you have to close the door, if, you're, if you know you're going to have to close that door that day, put it a little bit, like, to one side <laughs> so that you can actually still operate the fucking door. <laughs> but uh, if you're going to use... If you're going to use rum, you can sprinkle it just like the cologne, or you can... And if it's flammable rum, which is what Vodal spirits prefer usually... Pour it into a little metal cup and light it on fire. And then after it's done burning, on either side of the door, you remove the cup, you can empty it, whatever. It doesn't take a day because it, it burns out pretty quick and you don't need to leave the remains. I'm excited. <laughs> That's good. But, I mean, I'm just giving you very basic information. Um, for, for a lot of Papa Legba's and other Voda Spirits offerings and how to deal with them, how to get close to them, I would highly recommend... This is basically my Vodau Bible in a way, but it's called uh, the Haitian Vodau Handbook by Kenaz Falan. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but but he is a great author, and he works with another Northern European shaman. Now, he's not Northern European, but uh, he works with the Northern European uh, shaman called Raven Caldera, and they produce a lot of good work together. Especially another book, but in order to really understand Vodau spirits, the Haitian Vodau handbook is really where you want to go, and it's by Kinaz Falan. Right. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna show it to the camera. But yeah, this is this is as close to a Haitian Vodau Bible that I have, and uh, a lot of the stuff that he's recommended has worked very well. Um, I have other books on Voda, of course, but, uh, he has some really great information on the spirit specifically. But so you said your friend's actually cleaning out a room now, trying to uh, get that step out of the way to get rid of whatever negative influence she has there? Yeah. That's good. Because, uh, you gotta clean it really well <laughs> so that negative spirits don't have, like, that uh, catalyst that I was talking about. But let me uh, let me turn on this video for right now because uh, the subject's kind of over. But uh, is there any other question you had about doorway magic? No, that was it. All right, well, I'll go ahead and end this video. Thanks everybody for watching.